Hey guys, it's Arcade and today we are going to talk about bass. And specifically, I'm going to give you a few tips and tricks about how to make your bass sounds and bass lines better. So let's get started. Tip number one is splitting your bass. When you think about bass sounds, you usually think about the deep ones, the sub bass and stuff like that. But it doesn't always have to be like that. In this example, I'm going to show you how you can split your bass into two pieces so you can adjust it better. So essentially, I have two bass sounds. This one and then this one. Now this sound already has sub bass and higher bass frequencies as well. But let me just play this example with this sound. So yeah, you can definitely hear the sub bass, but it's not as loud. It's always better to split your bass into two pieces where you have only the high frequencies of one bass and only the low ones of another. So the way you do that is you go to your bass sound. It's on channel 5. I'm going to put EQ on it. And right click number 1. Choose type. High pass. And then drag this one dot down until it's four dots. So you have a really steep line. And then just move it and delete all the low frequencies. You can see here this is sub bass so you can delete around here depending on how much low frequencies you want but you definitely want to delete all the sub frequencies so now we have no bass that's why i added another sound which is this dharma sub preset but you can really use any sub preset and it's just a sub bass there's no high frequencies in this sound, so it only serves as the sub bass and it's playing the same notes as this bass. Now we essentially split our bass into two pieces. One is playing the sub frequencies and one is playing the higher frequencies. This way we can adjust the bass better to fit the song and the mix. Now the sub is way more obvious in the mix than it was before. Let's have a listen now. Way better. So that is tip number one. Something I always use. Split your bass into sub and the higher frequencies. Now, tip number two is sidechaining your bass. I'm sure you all heard about sidechain and I'm gonna show you the best way to do it without using any third party plugins. Essentially, what sidechaining is, is every time a kick hits, the volume of the bass is lowered, so that way your kick bass frequencies don't overlap with your bass frequencies. So let's see, we have the kick here, but I'm gonna show you a different method. So just get any kick, I'm gonna go with a top kick and put it in here. It can be any kick or any sound really, any clicky sound. Click on the sound, Select the new track for it. For example, we have it on track six, mixer track six. And then our sub bass is on track four, which you can see here. So click on the track six and, and remove the routing to the master channel just by clicking this icon here while the track six is selected. Now this way, the kick actually won't be heard in the mix. You just won't be able to hear it even though it's playing. So yeah, so the reason we do this is because this kick is going to be used only for sign chaining and it actually doesn't need to be heard in the mix. The kick is on track 6, your bass is on track 4. While the track 6 is selected, right click under track 4 and choose sign chain to this track. Now go to track 4 and Put a fruity limiter on the bottom of your effects chain. The reason you do it on the bottom because the effects are actually affected one by one. So if you have reverb on top and sidechain on the bottom, it will also sidechain the reverb. So go to the limiter, change it to compressor, right click the sidechain and choose your kick. Then lower the threshold and increase the ratio. Now every time the kick will hit, it will actually lower the volume of the bass. So now you can create any pattern of the kick, whatever you want, and just put it 
in the track and let's hear it only for the sub bass now we can actually see it as well so if you want to have it more obvious just lower the threshold increase the ratio also if the kick is too short and you want the sanctioning to be longer you can increase the release and there you have it the kick is actually affecting the bass without us even hearing the kick now we can play it with the whole song Also, we could sidechain the other bass as well by doing the same. Let's see. And yeah, that was tip number two, which is sidechaining. Everybody should know about it. I use it pretty much in every song. Now tip number three is slide notes. This is pretty useful, especially in hip hop, but you can really use it in any genre as well. So I have a little example here. So yeah, really small example. And here is my bass and it's an 808, right? So there is a few different ways you can use slide notes. One of them is just going to piano roll and clicking this icon, which says slide. And then if you put in a note anywhere, it won't actually play. It's a ghost note, pretty much. You won't hear it play, but if another note is actually playing while you put in the slide note, it will affect it and create this slide effect. And depending on how high this note is, the slide will be different. So if you select it, click control arrow up to put it octave up, the slide will go higher as well. Also, the length of the note changes how fast the slide is or how short it is. So yeah, those are the slide notes. You can use them usually with FL Studio plugins or samples, but sometimes they don't work with third party plugins. Another thing you can do is go to settings and play with the polyphony. So what you're gonna do is turn max to one. That means only one note at a time can be played. You enable portamento and increase the slide. This way, if you put any note, doesn't even have to be the slide note, it will actually slide right away. And this note will actually play as well. So it's not just a ghost note, it actually plays. And the amount of slide will change how long the pitch transition between one note to another is. So if we go all the way up, it would be super long. But if we go lower, it will be super fast. So it almost plays immediately. So you can always just play around with it. So yeah, those are the slide notes. You can use them for 808s, but you can also use them in EDM for different various effects. And you don't only need to use them for bass sounds. A lot of the times people use them for leads as well. So yeah, that's been tip number three. Now let me show you tip number four, which is an interesting one, really simple one, but some people don't really use it. So sometimes when you have a bass line already made, like me in this example, You can hear the second note is super low. It fits the chord progression, right? But when you play it with the sub, you can barely hear the sub. 
because it's so low. So one thing you can do actually, if you don't want to change the chord progression altogether, is just select the note that is too low and put it octave higher. I know this is really simple, but a lot of people don't do it. And you can actually just do this and right away, the sap will be way more obvious in the mix. And we can do the same, and we can do the same to the second part of the bass. Again, I use the technique where I split the bass into three pieces this time. And yeah, just by putting one note octave higher, we can get a way better result. So yeah, if you have the chord progression that has most of the notes in a good octave, but one of them is too low, just put it octave higher and you should be good. I know this is a really simple tip, but it can help a lot if you just keep it in mind. And last tip, but not least, is don't forget the slaps. And this is not really even a tip, it's just me showing off a bit. But really what I wanted to show you that bass lines, melodies, can be complex as well. A lot of the people usually go with just one note after another or something like that and treat the bass as just this deep sound that needs to be in the song. But sometimes you can go crazy and make the bass the main melody of the song. So I just wanted to show you this example where I went crazy with some slap bass and I'm actually gonna show you the full process of how I made this song in the next video. And hey guys, that is pretty much it for this video. Just a few basic tips for bass sounds. I know there is a lot of beginners on this channel who will find this useful. I'm sure there is a lot of people who already knew all of these, but it's always good to remind yourself some of the basic tips as well. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>